Hey guys, I'm here back with another math video. Uh, today we're going to be doing the basal problem. And the basal problem is basically uh, infinity i squared. What does this expand into? What is this? And uh, if you're not familiar with this notation, this is just 1 over 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9, etc. over 1 over infinity squared. What does this equal? And yes, this series does converge. It, it is a value. Um, and just try it out. And don't feel bad if you can't solve it. Uh, this is a, a long, fought hard problem that you will eventually solve. So um, yeah, and don't, so don't feel bad if you can't solve it. Okay, so let's solve it. Yeah. Um, you, caution, you do need a bit of calculus knowledge to solve this because you do need knowledge of the Taylor series. To start out, we need to express sine x in terms of the Taylor series. And sine x in terms of the Taylor series is just x minus x cubed over 3, uh, 3 factorial plus x5 over 5 factorial plus x7 over 7 factorial. This is what? This is the polynomial approximation, approximation of sine of x and uh you might be wondering what is this um how do you derive this how do you get this um it's complicated you have to use derivatives um i recommend uh taking a basic calculus course or a calculus textbook if you're not familiar with cal these calculus topics yet um or just go on Khan academy and he'll help you with derivatives in taylor series and the basic calculus or and stuff like that but uh for this problem you do need to know the taylor series but this is all you need to know so if you don't know just know this is uh this is equal to sine of x Okay, and uh, what the solution calls for is that we divide both sides by x, and I'll tell you why later. It's x squared over 3 factoria plus x 4 over 5 factoria. Okay, now we have this. And uh, let's try to graph this. Let's graph it, why don't we? And uh, if we graph this, I know what you're thinking right now. How the heck does trigonometry have anything to do with finding this sum of the series? Well, you'll see. Graph this, it looks something like this. Where this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, etc., etc. So uh, from here, we notice the roots are r equals plus minus pi, plus minus 2 pi, plus minus 3 pi, etc. What do you do here? Well, usually if you have a polynomial, how would you actually express it in terms of the, its roots? Well, usually what I would do is I would do x minus r1 times x minus r2 times x minus r3, etc. equals 0. That would be the polynomial. That's what I would do. You just multiply these together, and then you eventually get a polynomial with those roots, right? Well, that's what we're going to do here, actually. We know the roots, right? We know the roots. So actually, if we express sine of x, sine of x over x in its polynomial form, that would be um, one minus um, x over pi one plus x over pi one minus x over two pi one plus x over two pi, etc. Um, let's simplify this a bit. Let's multiply these pairs. Because as we know, a minus b times a plus b is a squared minus b squared. So multiplying these terms, we'll get sine x over x equals 1 minus x squared over pi squared, 1 minus x squared over 4 pi squared, 1 minus x squared over 9 pi squared, 1 minus x squared over 16 pi squared, dot, dot, dot. We got it. We got this. Okay, so what can we tell from this? Let's compare this equation. Let's co So you see this equation, right? The Taylor series we got originally? Let's compare it with this equation. What what terms can we get? What x terms can we get? Uh, one thing we notice is that if you actually expand this equation, this thing, if you expand this thing, you'll get, uh, your first term you'll get is 1, of course, because 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Take the 1 from every single, you know, pair or every single parenthesis things. Take the one from all of those and multiply them together. You have this term, right? 
And then if you take, uh, if you just take one of the x squares and just multiply by, uh, so one of the x squares turn from one of them and multiply, whoops, and multiply by all the other ones, so a negative x squared over pi squared times one times one times one, you get uh, an, some kind of x squared term with a coefficient. And that's the x squared term over here. And then if you take two x squared terms, like this one and this one, uh, this one and this one, and then you multiply one, 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 one and you just uh, every, and you add uh, all the x fourth terms together, um, you get an x fourth term. And this is actually why we uh, divided by x in the first place, because we know that sine x also has these roots, these roots. But if you actually uh, if you use these roots to make the polynomial. Uh, you just get this, and it's impossible to get an x term out of this because there's no x terms in this this expression. It's impossible to get an x cubed term out of this because there's no x terms in this expression. X five term. It actually just uh, it actually just end up being sine of x equals x multiplied by uh, these things, and that's because there's an extra root in the middle. Actually, I forgot to say there's an extra root in the middle with zero. So if if it was sine x roots of sine x, which is why we divided by x in the first place. So we don't have to deal with that. We don't have to deal with the zero root. Okay, we have this. Let's expand this. Let's, let's expand it. And just for fun, after we expand it, let's find the coefficient of x squared, as I was saying. So what did I say before about finding the coefficient of x squared? We take, uh, we take this. We take the expression from here and multiply by 1. Multiply, we take expression from here and multiply by 1. Add them together. So that would be just x squared over pi squared times 1 times 1 times 1 from all the other ones, plus x squared over 4 pi squared times 1 times 1 times 1, plus x squared over 9 pi squared times 1 times 1 times 1. And eventually, if you get rid of this, that will become, um, let's see, uh, negative 1 over pi squared minus 1 over 4 pi squared minus 1 over 9 pi squared times x. Right. That's the coefficient. And again, that's only the that's not the this actual expression. That's only the coefficient of the x squared term in this expression. And this actually simplifies to negative one over pi uh, pi squared times. Oh, what's this? Oh, whoops, one. What's this? Wow, this looks familiar. This thing looks really familiar. This this looks like the thing we want to find out. So let's try to find out. And remember what I said before, these two expressions, this expression and this expression, are both equal to sine of x over x. And thus, they themselves are equal. And if they, the expressions are equal, that means the coefficient of x squared must also be equal. And what's the coefficient of x squared in here? This coefficient is 1 over 3 factoria, which is 1 6. So, Knowing that the coefficient of x squared in this expression is one six, and knowing that the coefficient of x squared in this expression, we just took a we just took one term out of all of these, and then uh, multiply. You, you know how to distribute. You know uh, how to distribute. Um, what were those things? I want. I want to find a name for these. But I don't know. You know how to, like when you expand these, you you know how to distribute these, and the coefficient of x squared is just taking one of this plus this plus this plus this, and you add them together, and you get this. And thus, finally, we can conclude that negative 1 over pi squared I equals 0 infinity of x squared equals negative, oh, whoops, uh, yeah, negative 1, 6. That should be negative, sorry, negative 1, 6. And thus, da, 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 oh, why did I say x? This is i, sorry i squared equals pi squared over 6. That's our answer. Uh, to be honest, to me at least, it's a really sexy proof by Euler. I mean, I never would have thought of using sine um, to do this. I never would have thought of using the Taylor expansion, etc. I never even thought pi. You probably didn't think that pi was even going to be in the answer because this has nothing to do with circles or anything. But that is the answer, and I think it's pretty amazing how, like, even though you think of pi as in geometry, it shows up basically everywhere. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Um, I hope my proof was clear enough.
I'm sorry that it did take a little bit of calculus to get here, and I know a lot of you have don't know calculus yet. For those that do, I hope you found this problem to be fulfilling. So, uh, thanks, and I'll see you next week. Of all the numbers, the median equals middle number. And these are all values we'll use eventually, and the range is the uh, oh, whoops, largest minus smallest. So let's find the mode, mean, median, and range of this data set. So the mode would be 6, because 6 occurs 3 times more than any other time. So 6. The mean, if you calculate it out, I believe is uh, 